All right, so this is my tutorial on how to get NeoVim set up. And I guess we should just start. So what you're gonna do is open up your terminal of choice. I'm using Windows Terminal. You can install it from the Microsoft Store. Uh, and it might look a little bit different because I have Fish installed. But yeah, so it should look like something like this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the first link in the description, which is installing NeoVim on GitHub. And it tells you how to install for different systems. I'm using Ubuntu on Windows subsystem, subsystem for Linux. So I'm just gonna run this command, which is sudo apt install NeoVim. If you're using Windows, you can scroll up here and you'll probably see something like, um, here. So you can use like chocolate or scoop. And in uh, Mac OS, you can use this stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in sudo apt get install neovim and I have it auto completed and I'm typing my password. Whoa. All right, and I already have it installed, so I'll just say uh, neovim is already the newest version. So after you have it installed, you can run the command nvim, and then you'll see something like this pop up. Yours could look a little bit different since I have it set up configured differently. I have like a color scheme, color scheme and stuff. So you can test it out by just typing I, which brings you into insert mode. And I'll talk about modes in a bit. And then escape brings you out of insert mode, went into normal mode. So type I, you can type in stuff and then hit escape. Now, if you want to exit NeoVim, and a lot of people have problems with this, is you type in colon Q and the exclamation point. So you'll see up here that I've actually edited this file, which means I've added stuff or like modified stuff inside of this file. If you haven't edited anything, you can just type in colon Q, which is a safer way to go. It gives you a warning if you have unsaved files, and it just uh, basically just warns you if there's any errors. Exclamation mark just means uh, quit out no matter uh, if there's like any files open, open or anything. So if you type that, you'll exit NeoVim, but I'm just gonna go back. So how I, confu how I confu figure NeoVim, sorry about that, uh, is you type in colon E, myVimRC. So myVimRC is a directory. You can actually follow, uh, type in colon echo myVimRC. And you'll see I have it in this uh, .config uh, nvim init.vim file. And if you type that in, it should bring up a file like this. Yours could be empty because you never configured it before. But yeah, this is basically your um, configuration settings. Now some good ones to, I like to point out are clipboard equals unnamed plus. This just basically allows me to copy to my system clipboard and allow me to paste stuff from my system clipboard. Uh, number, relative number and cursor line, it just like lines, like you can see that the uh, the lines are relative. I have the tab set at two, because I like that. Uh, Vim defaults to eight, I think. Maybe NeoVim is four or something, I forgot. And I have some other key bindings that I can look through. And then, What's important is this call plug begin. So what I'm using in NeoVim is this thing called Vim plug. And Vim plug just basically allows you to uh, add plugins to Vim. So I'm using Linux, so I, I'd run this command, but I already have it installed, so I'm probably not going to run it again. If you're using the other operating systems like a Linux, yeah, like Unix and stuff, you can just run this command. and you, you, if you type, if you start typing, you should be able to see that it auto completes to like plug install, plug status, and stuff. So that tells you that plug plug vim plug is open, not plug. Uh, but I have a couple of plugins right here. So I have Groovebox, Nutri, Vim Airline. Groovebox is the theme I have right now, which is just sort of like, uh, I guess, sort of like grayish color. It's pretty nice, I think. I have no tree quit on open, which just means that when I toggle no tree, which is a file explorer like this, uh, if I open a file, it just automatically quits no tree. And then I have airline and vim airline is all the stuff you see on the bottom here, which is 
it, it just looks kind of cool, so I have it. So now we can exit out of our um, vimlc or init.vim in the case of neovim. Just type in the following queue and I'll exit it, you out. So we can uh, look at some stuff here. For instance, if I go to likes, uh, documents. Yes. Yep. Uh, to create a new file, you can just type in nvim and then a random file name. So let's say uh, hello.txt, right? And this is just a basic text, text file. Now, in vim, there's different modes. The main three are normal mode, visual mode, and insert mode. So normal mode allows you to execute commands. And I'll talk about commands later. But for basics, you're going to use insert mode. So to enter insert mode, you'll see that if I try to type stuff right now, it, it, might, it might not be like typing. And there's a reason for that. Because we're in normal mode right now, it's not actually going to be able to type any letters. To type something, you press the I key, and that to, uh, makes you go to insert mode. And you'll see it actually says insert down here. So I can type something like hello world, right? And then to exit insert mode, you just type escape. I actually binded the escape key to caps lock, since caps lock is a lot newer to my fingers and I can reach it easily. So you can do that, and I use a program called auto hotkey. To make that happen. But basically, once you enter a normal mode, you should see the insert thing disappear. So that's typing I, this is typing escape. So I escape, right? And there's a couple of uh, cool commands in insert mode. And to demonstrate that, I'll probably just like uh, spam some keys real quick so we can see what happens. And then, uh, right. So in normal mode, you use the keys H, J, K, L to navigate. You can also use the arrow keys, and I'm pressing the arrow keys right now, but in Vim, you generally use H, J, K, K and L. So by pressing H, you can uh, go to the left one, one character, right? And then pressing L, you go to the right one character. H, I mean, no, J moves you down one line, and K moves you up. Right, so K moves you up, J moves, J moves you down. So you can see, see stuff like this. Some other useful navigation commands are W, which hops you forward one word. So W, if you see, it'll go forward one word. And this is especially useful if you just want to like skip quickly through a sentence or like a line or something. And you can see it, uh, it skips forward a little quickly. And B, brings you back one word. So I'm pressing B right now. Oops. I'm pressing B right now, and it's going back. And then to select stuff, we enter what's called visual mode. So visual mode is, ent is entered through the letter V. If you press V, you'll see that it says visual down here, and it has like the visual signal right here. Once you're in visual mode, you can move around, and you'll see that it starts highlighting letters for you. So you can execute commands on these letters. For instance, let's say I wanted to delete uh, this character. I mean, like, maybe the first three A's, right? You can enter visual mode, move over with two L's, and then pressing the D key, you can delete them, right? So D is a special command that allows you to delete text. And D, when, when you press D, you'll see a little D symbol pop up right here. And this just basically says that, oh, the next command you'll type is what we're going to delete. So for instance, I'm at this A right here, right? And I want to delete this entire, I uh, let's call it word, of oh, six A's, right? So what I can do is I can type in W and it automatically jumps forward to the next word and deletes everything before it. So if I do that again, DW will delete an entire word. Similarly, if I go right here and I press D, you'll see the cursor is right here right now. But if I press B, it'll jump back one word. And then 
if you go into visual mode, let's say I select these characters and I press D, it'll automatically delete all of them. So D is super useful. And you can also use two Ds to delete an entire line. So pressing D twice deletes an entire line. And what you see right here is there's also another command called U. And U is just for undo. So let's say I accidentally delete these lines, but I want them back, right? I can press U twice and it'll undo the last two commands that I executed. And then to redo, you press Control R and that redoes all your commands. So U for undo, R for redo, right? Those are also two really uh, helpful commands. And then X, all right, then letter X, we'll talk about X. X deletes, it's similar to D in that if you select text and you press X, it'll delete the text. But you can also use X to delete one letter at a time, right? So I can delete stuff like that. And what else? I think those are just the main commands that you can use in Vim. Uh, let me think. Oh, Y and P. So in Vim, you might be thinking, how, how can I copy and paste text? So for instance, if I wanted to copy and paste hello, how would I do that? Well, there's this command that's called Y, and Y just allows you to copy anything. It's sort of like D, but instead of deleting it, copies. So if I type in YW, it'll copy, you, you might not see anything happen, but it has actually copied hello to my clipboard. So if I like go to the end right here and I type P, which is paste, it'll paste in the word, right? So let's say I select all this text right here, right? And then I type in P, it'll automatically paste in all the text I have selected. And what's nice to know is that when you delete stuff, when you delete stuff, so like for instance, if I delete all this A, all of these A's, it's actually on my clipboard right now. So if I type in P, it'll actually paste them. So a delete isn't actually really much of a delete, it's more of like a cut. So it cuts stuff into your clipboard and you can paste it somewhere else. So Y is for yanking, what we, uh, what we call it in Vim. So Y for yank, which is basically copy. P for paste, and then uh, deleting will cause it to be copied to your clipboard as well. Alright, uh, some extra notes are to navigate, these are for navigation basically. So shift A will bring you to the end of the line and put you in insert mode. This is especially useful if, let's say we have, um, we want to go to the end of the line, well we're not going to just press all of these L's, and then like press A, right? We can just type in shift A and it brings us automatically to the end of the line. So we can start typing, right? And then A by itself just makes you go to the begin, go to go to the, like the end of the basically your cursor. So you'll see that I takes you to the beginning. You'll see that I just like goes to the beginning and A goes to the end. Right? So if I go to like the end right now, right? And I press A, it'll put me at the very end. But if I press I, it'll put me one letter before. So A is really useful. I is really useful. Uh, if you want to go to the end of the line, but not be put in insert mode, you can just type in the dollar sign, which is above the full key. So basically shift full or the dollar sign uh, whatever you prefer, it takes you to the end of the line. And then zero will put you to the, f to the beginning. So dollar sign for the end, zero for the beginning. Uh, and the little command is shift O. So I'm pressing shift O right now. I mean, wait, not shift O. If I press O, it'll make a new line and then put me in insert mode. So O, is new line below in insert mode. And then shift O, so capital O, it puts me in a new line above and then put, puts me in insert mode. These two are also really useful. And let me think what else. 
I think those are uh, the main commands that I use. Probably like the majority of the commands. You can look look up some word commands if you just search up something like, for instance, um, vim uh, commands, right? And there's probably like a vim cheat sheet, right? So these are a bunch of commands, and you'll notice there is a lot of them. So it's it's probably not a good idea to try to memorize all of these at once. What I like to do is I like to like I I just use most of the commands I just talked about right here. And then if there's a special scenario, like a special case, like, oh, I want to do this command, but I, I'm wondering if there's a command to do it. You can look in here and try to find one that works. So you can see there's like a uh, jump to the next paragraph. There's like, um, yeah, there's just a lot of things down here. So you can look at those commands. Uh, and I think that's about it. There's not much a lot. There's not a lot more to talk about. There's also a lot of uh, like col um colon commands. So like e what I used before like e my then like c this just allows me to edit a file. And let me just take a look down over here to see if I missed anything like that's pretty common. I think C is also pretty common. So like C, if I type in uh, CW, it deletes a word and puts me in insert mode. So it says like D, but then with an I at the end, and like C, capital C just uh, changes the entire line. So C is for change. And I think that's about it. There's not a lot more to talk about. I'll probably have more videos in the future. Uh, an important thing to note is once you're done editing a file, you can type in the command colon w and this writes the file. So you'll see right here that it says hello.txt plus. This just means that my file hasn't been written yet. And it just means it hasn't been saved. So if I try to quit right now, you'll see uh, e37, no write since last change. And if you want to save anything you've edited, which most likely you, you do, you just type in colon w, it says hello.txt written, and you can quit out. So that's basically the uh, everything that is in NeoVim. You can look into some other stuff. One, one thing to note is that if you ever want to like just sort of really learn the commands in Vim, there should be a command called vim tutor. And if you type that in, You'll see it, uh, it says copying the file. But in a second, it'll pop you into a Vim Tutor screen. And this just allows you, uh, this just teaches you about all of the stuff in Vim. And it's quite long. You can just go through all of this, and there's a lot of commands, probably some I missed, most likely some I missed. But you can just take a look through this, and yeah, it's pretty cool. And you can just type in control, uh, colon Q to quit. So that's about it. I guess I'll end the video now and leave any questions in the comments below. Thank you and thanks for watching and see you next time.